I'm here with Susie Wolf, the fastest woman in the world. Um, so Susie, it's great to have you here. So can you please tell me what's new in Formula One? Well, for us, the Formula One has changed massively this year because of the technical regulations. We've seen a massive shift towards more usage of software. The engines are V6 now, which means they're not as powerful, but they're going the same distance using one third less fuel. That then means the engine has a lot more work to do, um, and that's where the software and electronics play such a big part. As a driver, we have a lot more work to do on the electronic side because we always have to charge battery, know when we can use the battery, and all that information is coming from the garage, from the engineers based in the garage who are constantly, through the software, monitoring what the engine is doing and giving that feedback to the driver, which we then have to change on the steering wheel. So it's a big shift away from simply driving as fast as you can for as long as you can. We've seen big changes in Formula One. So when, when driving a regular car, I'm used to do a lot of uh, using uh, infotainment system, for example, um, using the navigation or listening to music, preferably podcasts. So what do you enjoy while driving a car? Well, first of all, as a racing driver, I love driving. For me, that's the most enjoyable part of being in a car. But I also love all the technology which is coming into cars these days. I love the fact that my mobile phone connects to the sound system. I can listen to whatever music I choose. I don't just have to listen to the radio. I love the fact that I don't need to concentrate on which direction I travel. I have my navigation system telling me exactly which route to take. It's telling me when there is a traffic jam ahead. It's telling me if I need to take a detour to miss the traffic. So all these extra gimmicks um, make life for me in the normal road car much more enjoyable. I can sit on the Autobahn in Germany with my Detronic on and I don't need to worry about braking or accelerating. So I think the driver experience for normal drivers on the road has improved massively over the last few years. And as a person that loves driving, I still think that this technology makes the experience even nicer. So this uh, brings me to the next question. The, the automotive industry is currently thinking a lot about autonomous or automated driving, so where a lot of the, the driving is done by the car itself. So as a Formula One driver, so what's your opinion on automated driving? Well, I think it's been a lot of research and development in this area, but what amazed me, because as a Mercedes-Benz ambassador, I did the Bertha Benz Mannheim to Fordsheim mm -hmm. route in a, one of the old classic cars. To think that 125 years ago, that route was done for the first time in an automobile. And now they can do that route fully automated. We're not talking about driving on an autobahn or a motorway. We're talking about normal street roads, roundabouts, mm -hmm. traffic lights, pedestrians. That route can be done fully automated now. And I think that's incredible technology. It's incredible how far we have come in such a short time. And the fact that we've come this far means that this is going to be the future of driving. I think it's something positive because it makes the experience even easier for the driver, particularly the people who are just driving to get from point A to point B. For the people that enjoy driving, I think of course we don't want it to be fully automated, but the fact that this te technology has come this far is something very impressive. Yeah, thank you. So you don't feel your job is going away in the future by automated driving? <laughs> I think it's going to change um, the automotive industry. But I think the truth is what I do in motorsport, driving in Formula One, this will never change because the technology and the developments that we're making in Formula One, they are to make the car go faster, but they are ultimately not to take over the role of the driver. The driver is still the most important factor of getting the car around the racetrack as fast as possible. In the, in the automotive industry, we uh also see now a big trend towards the connected cars. So it's not just the smartphones from the user being connected to the car, but also connecting to the car, the connecting the car to the internet and to other cars. That's a, a huge topic currently. I think in uh, race uh, races in general and in Formula One in particular, you are already much more advanced in, in connected cars. The level of communication between the car and and the box or the pits is 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 very high. So what do you think can be carried over from Formula One to uh, the normal cars? Well, in Formula One, it's very technologically advanced on this side because there's so much technology in the car 
and this is creating so much information and this information needs to be turned into data and needs to be quickly analysed and reacted to. In Formula One, data is live now, which means as I'm driving the car out on track, within two seconds, the data from me driving the car is transported back to the garage in the pits. So that means if there's a problem in the car or if there's a problem in the engine, the team can react very quickly to this change. And quite often this will result in, for example, if my oil temperature is too high or I have a problem with the battery or the electronics, they can analyze this data quickly get the information to the pit wall and my engineer will then come over the radio and tell me a setting to change on the steering wheel. So whereas before this problem would have resulted in me not finishing the race, mm -hmm. now it simply results in me changing a setting on the car which can get me to the end of the race. The next stage of this is the fact that we are creating so much information, so much data, it's how we analyse, store and get this data back to our factory. Because on the race weekend, we have only 60 people allowed in the race team. This is part of the regulations. Mm -hmm. So we need to get this mass of data back to the Williams factory for the whole team to then analyse, look at, and then come back to us with changes or things they would like to see um, based on the analysis of the data. So then you come to the next problem of how you get this mass of information back to the factory. We could be racing in Australia or China, and we need to get this information back to the UK. And then you come to the next issue of security. How do we make sure that this information is not getting hacked into by anyone else? So this is something we're constantly working on in Formula One and something that's, that's very, very important. So do you think um, there are some areas where Electrobit could contribute to the industry with regards to the connected car? 100% because all the technology that we are seeing in Formula One is ultimately technology which in four or five years will end up on a streetcar. The new engine technology that we have using part hybrid, part motor will end up in a car in four or five years. So all the, everything that Electrobit could do in Formula One to help us with this mass of data, with all these tools which help the race driver to ultimately be faster and get more from the car, this will in the future be anyway on the streetcars. So this is something that Electrobit, I think, could have quite a, a big influence on in helping the teams to come up with the best technology and the best way forward for helping ultimately the race driver get to the finish line first.